This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm China Grain. This morning on Sunrise, a wildfire burning close to the area's water supply jumps in size. More resources are being called in to help stop that spread and a plan to add 700 units of affordable housing to Portland is running up against a roadblock. Why the city says this new building won't work. But before we get to all that, let's check in with meteorologist Sarah Bagby for a quick look at the forecast. Thank you, China. Yeah, we do have a warmer day today. I did let you know that those wildfires are going to create a little bit of haze and we're going to see that today. But right now we're waking up to some warmer temperatures. Take a look as we head into the Portland area. You'll notice that that system that was coming towards us did drop off a tiny bit last night, but not so much in the Portland area, more in the Cascades. And then another system is on its way that will cool things down and maybe help with the haze that you're noticing in the air. Now, this means some air quality advisories. This should go into to effect or stay in effect that is until about later afternoon today, four o'clock or so. Um, now in the Cascades that shall stay a little bit longer um, as it holds in the temperatures also in the inland valleys. Here's your up day or three day forecast hot and hazy and then it'll get warm and then cool off into the week. Now here is what we're looking at as far as the smoke forecast. This really affects us. You notice it will change over the next couple of days, but right now this is the story at hand and one of the fires in our area is the Camp Creek fire and China, I'll let you let everyone know what's going on with that. Yeah, so the Camp Creek fire in Mount Hood National Forest has grown to over 900 acres for perspective. It was just 100 acres this time yesterday. More resources are now on the way to fight those flames. It's burning in the Bull Run watershed, which is close to Portland's water supply. Our Edwards has that latest. The battle is on to try to contain the Camp Creek fire. But there's a lot of stuff out there that is dry and, and ready to burn a little bit. A lightning strike Thursday night started the fire. It's in the Bull Run watershed and just a few miles from Portland Water Bureau's Headworks treatment facility. But so far, it's not threatening the facility. Fortunately, right now, um, there's no immediate impacts to our drinking water, so our drinking water continues to be safe, um, you know, high quality, great to drink, and, and continue to use as you normally would use. But the Portland Water Bureau is closely monitoring the fire. One of our top priorities with this is protecting our employees. And so if this fire were to threaten our treatment facilities, we would want to evacuate our employees. And if we did that, um, we would have to switch off our bull run source. Firefighters are attacking the flames in a couple of ways. There are roads in the area that allow firefighters to bring in equipment to help build fire lines on the ground. There are also aircraft. Uh, helicopters and fixed wing aircraft that have been dropping water on the fire uh, today and yesterday. Right now, there's no timetable for when the fire will be under control. It's, you know, a very dense forest with a lot of fuels, and so it, it may take a little bit of time to get it fully contained and out. You can follow the Portland Water Bureau on social media and their website at portland.gov backslash water for the latest water quality information. Art Edwards, KGW News. In developing news, police have identified the man killed in a shooting in southeast Portland on Saturday. This happened just before 4 yesterday morning on southeast 188th Avenue along East Burnside. Portland police say that when they arrived, they found 61-year-old James Wilson dead at the scene. We don't know if any suspects have been arrested yet, but detectives say they don't believe there's any danger to the public. And we also have new information on a hit and run in northeast Portland. An 18-year-old woman now faces attempted murder and other charges after police say she intentionally ran over another woman. Investigators say the two knew each other and were in some sort of fight before the crash. It happened around 3.30. 30 yesterday morning at Lombard and 72nd Avenue. The victim is in the hospital in critical condition. At traffic alert this morning, the Hawthorne Bridge is closed for maintenance right now. It's expected to reopen at 6 tonight. This includes closures for pedestrians and cyclists as well as cars. Crews will be greasing the counterweight cables. All other bridges will remain open. A proposed solution to Portland's housing crisis is hitting kind of a snag right now. A developer wants to build a skyscraper on the edge of town. The plans call for 700 units, but as Tim Gordon found out, the city says that is way too tall. When it comes to affordable housing, you think the more the better. But in the case of the building you see in this design rendering, the city of Portland says it is too big for where the developer wants to build it. That would be on this lot near the west end of the Burnside Bridge. New buildings here are limited to 75 feet. 
the city has obviously a need for affordable housing. Um, and I think this is a great site for it. Curtis Reistad says he is a fourth generation Portland builder who wants to help with the affordable housing crisis. Burnside One, a 728 unit LEED Platinum certified apartment building is his vision. And he thinks the city should allow him to build it here. This is my attempt to try to be part of the solution. I'm hitting some roadblocks. Hopefully I meet with the city council and they give us a variance on the height limitation of 75 feet. The problem is building codes are building codes. The Bureau of Planning and Sustainability says the 75 foot limit here is for a variety of reasons, including proximity to the river. And the biggest reason it is in a historic preservation zone and 350 feet is nearly 300 feet too tall, even for affordable housing. Well, we understand the need, but the zoning code currently limits buildings on this site to 75 feet, and we have to work within those limits. Reistat is approved and has begun building another affordable housing project on Northeast Gleason, a mass timber mixed-use design with 105 units for those making 60% of the area median income, called Timberview. But this downtown location would be a much larger project situated near the Max Lines in an area that could use a boost. And Rystadt doesn't think 350 feet should be too big of one for people who need a more affordable place to live. There's not going to be a penthouse suite. You know, if you want that, you can go to the Ritz, right? You've got the Pearl down there. Why not have that for affordable housing? The politicians have been talking about affordable housing and how they support it. Well, now it's to put up or shut up. The developer is trying to meet with the city council and figure out if the council will consider changing the building code. The city, for its part, is not against the project. And in fact, the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability wants to find a different location that could handle the high rise. The owners of a beloved local store worry this could be their last year in business, but their loyal customers are trying to help. Hippo Hardware is best known for its hippo columns out front on East Burnside. The quirky store features some vintage items that date all the way back to the 1860s. That includes elaborate chandeliers, crystal doorknobs, and even passed out toilets. We talked to the owner of the iconic store, Stephen Miller, who says when word got out that he might close down and an influx of people came down to buy items items and memorabilia. I feel like it's been a grace that we have survived, you know, and uh, we want to, what we're looking for is just to, you know, have a good life. Nobody wants to be a millionaire. We just want to grow old. I'd like to leave this place to my employees as a legacy of all their hard work. Miller told the Oregonian rising cost and lower interest in vintage items have made this a rough year for the store, but he's hopeful after seeing recent support. Next on KGW News at sunrise, making sure students have a safe, clear path to school. Parents and city leaders work to get homeless camps near schools cleared before classes begin. And did you know that you can watch sunrise anytime you want on KGW Plus? All of our news is on Roku and Amazon Fire, so just look for KGW, add us to your home screen, and then stream sunrise on your schedule.